Tristan Tyne Bailey entered the world on January 18th, 2008 in Singapore as the youngest addition to Forrest and Stacey Bailey's family of five. Her first four years unfolded against the vibrant backdrop of Singapore, shaping her into the spirited individual she was known to be. Renowned for her boundless energy and unwavering loyalty to her friends, Tristan was hailed by loved ones as a beacon of strength from an early age. Reflecting on her daughter's character, Stacey fondly remarked, quote, She was just a powerful child that was able to give a lot to so many. The Bailey family eventually settled in St. John's County, Florida, where Tristan flourished within the community. At Patriot Oaks Academy, as a seventh grader, she made her mark as a popular figure among peers, adorning the role of both student and cheerleader with grace and charm. On the morning of May 9th, 2021, as the clock struck 9am, the Bailey family eagerly anticipated celebrating Mother's Day together. However, their joy was interrupted when one of the Bailey children ventured into Tristan's room to wake her, only to find it empty. She had last been seen at around midnight by her sibling, after the family had returned from a day out. Concern quickly mounted as the Bailey family realised the 13-year-old schoolgirl was nowhere to be found. At around 10am, they dialed 911 to report Tristan missing after a brief search of the nearby vicinity yielded no clues as to her whereabouts. Law enforcement and local volunteers scoured the area for any sign of the teen but didn't find any trace of her. A Florida missing child alert was issued later that day at around 4.49pm. At approximately 6.06pm, a concerned resident returning from a run contacted authorities to report the discovery of a deceased individual by a retention pond in a wooded area east of the cul-de-sac on Saddleston Drive, a short distance away from the Bailey residence. At around 8pm, subsequent preliminary identification confirmed the tragic loss of 13-year-old Tristan Bailey, who had been victim to a violent and brutal death, having sustained approximately 114 stab wounds, 49 of which were defensive wounds. Tragically, upon discovery, her body bore unsettling markings, the word karma inscribed on the inside of her left ankle and a smiley face drawn on her right ankle. The origins of these markings remained shrouded in mystery, leaving investigators perplexed as to their significance and the identity of the individual responsible. Near the scene, a buck knife lacking a tip was recovered from a nearby pond. Remarkably, forensic analysis revealed a fragment of this knife lodged in Tristan's scalp, linking it directly to the crime. Further examination uncovered DNA traces on the knife conclusively matching to the suspect, solidifying the connection to the harrowing events. At 8.49pm, a 14-year-old boy and classmate of Tristan's, Aidan Fucci, and his parents were taken to the St. John's County Sheriff's Office to be interviewed in regards to the murder. In response, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office promptly terminated the search efforts. Tristan's identity was confirmed the following day after a long night of shocking developments. During their inquiries into Tristan's disappearance, authorities found CCTV footage showing Tristan walking in her neighbourhood approximately half an hour after she was last seen by her family at 12.30am. Further CCTV timestamped at 1.14am showed the cheerleader walking with a young male individual, who were seen again at around 1.45am heading east on Saddlestone Drive. 
At 3.27 a.m., camera footage captured from the same residence depicts an individual, allegedly Aiden, running in the opposite direction alone and carrying a pair of white Nike shoes. Shortly thereafter, subsequent footage captured Aiden re-entering his home, still clutching the same pair of white Nike shoes. Following Fucci's arrest, investigators conducted a thorough search of his residence at 12.44am on May the 10th, uncovering crucial evidence within his bedroom. Among these findings were a sheath belonging to a buck knife, a pair of wet white Nike shoes visibly stained with blood, a blood smeared t-shirt, a white piece of paper bearing handwriting possibly tainted with blood, and a wet pair of blue denim jeans discovered within a laundry basket. Additionally, blood and dirt were detected on the drain in the bathroom sink adjacent to Aidan's bedroom. At 3.30am, Aidan Fucci was formally placed under arrest on suspicion of second-degree murder and sent to a juvenile detention centre in Volusia County. Investigators discovered that Fucci had asked his friend for Tristan's phone number and convinced her to leave her residence to meet a friend in the early hours of that fateful day. Little did she know that she was being lured to her death. Following Fucci's arrest, a candlelit vigil was held in memory of Tristan at the South Darbin Crossing Amenities Centre, which was attended by hundreds of local residents who were left shocked by the events of the last 24 hours. More incriminating and disturbing evidence came to light in the form of Snapchat photos and videos posted by the suspect. Following the interrogation, while seated in the back of a patrol car, Fucci proceeded to capture images and videos, sharing them on the social media platform Snapchat. Among the content shared was an image featuring the caption, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? And in a video he audibly stated, We're having fun in a fucking cop car. By Tuesday, May 11th, Fucci faced formal charges for Tristan's murder, despite adamantly professing his innocence. His inconsistent narrative regarding the events of that fateful night, coupled with compelling evidence uncovered by authorities, including his own DNA, ultimately led to his indictment and sealed his fate. The second-degree murder charge was upgraded to first-degree murder shortly thereafter. During a press conference held on May 27th, State Attorney R.J. Loritza disclosed disturbing details regarding Fucci's intentions, revealing that he had confided in friends about his sinister plans to commit murder by taking someone into the woods and stabbing them. Loritza further noted that Fucci had forewarned his acquaintances to anticipate the grim event within a month. Following these revelations, Fucci was transferred to Duval County Jail, where he was detained without bond. Furthermore, his mother, Crystal Smith, faced legal repercussions after being arrested for allegedly tampering with evidence, specifically by attempting to wash blood from Fucci's jeans. However, she was later released. A police report released by the St John County Sheriff's Office in July 2021 shed further light on Fucci's disturbing inclinations. It revealed that he frequently spoke of his macabre fantasies of killing individuals, habitually carrying a knife, and expressed intentions to drag a random person into the woods to commit murder. Testimony from Fucci's ex-girlfriend, Sophie Bauman, corroborated these assertions, as she recounted instances where Fucci would brandish his knife and simulate stabbing her. Bauman also disclosed Fucci's claim of hearing voices in his head when experiencing anger. Shortly before the commencement of jury selection for the trial on February 6, 2023, Fucci made a significant decision opting to change his plea from not guilty to guilty. 
In a letter, he expressed remorse for the anguish he inflicted upon Tristan's family and friends. Judge R. Lee Smith characterised this case as the most difficult and shocking he had presided over, emphasising that the heinous act was devoid of any discernible motive or justification. Instead, it stemmed solely from Fucci's internal desire to experience the act of taking a life. He had no motive whatsoever to kill Tristan specifically. She was simply victim to Fucci's bloodlust and sadistic curiosity. Charged as an adult rather than a minor due to the extremely violent nature of the crime and the fact it was premeditated, Fucci pleaded guilty to the first-degree murder of Tristan Bailey. Following the trial, now 16-year-old Aidan Fucci received the maximum sentence of life imprisonment on March 24th, 2023. However, after 25 years of incarceration, his case will undergo review. For the duration of the trial, a poignant and symbolic gesture unfolded as one of Tristan's siblings, Alexis, meticulously dropped 114 aqua stone hearts into a glass jar one by one, representing the harrowing number of stab wounds her sister endured. This jar remained a solemn presence as each family member delivered their heartfelt statements, concluding with the addition of a white stone, symbolising an aspect related to Bailey's untimely demise. In response to the tragic loss of Tristan Bailey, her family took decisive action by establishing the Tristan Bailey Memorial Foundation. This foundation played a pivotal role in advocating for legislative change within the state of Florida. Their efforts culminated in the enactment of a law that imposes restrictions on the disclosure of crime scene photographs pertaining to minors who have fallen victim to murder within the state. This significant measure aims to protect the dignity and privacy of young victims and their families during the aftermath of such devastating events. The case of Tristan Bailey's tragic murder has left an indelible mark on both her family and the wider community. Despite the profound grief and anguish they have endured, the Bailey family's resilience and determination have led to meaningful change through the establishment of the Tristan Bailey Memorial Foundation and the enactment of legislation aimed at safeguarding the dignity of young victims. While nothing can alleviate the pain of their loss, their proactive efforts serve as a testament to their unwavering commitment to honour Tristan's memory and ensure that her legacy continues to make a positive impact.